Hey everyone, this is Sean. Thank you so much for clicking onto my channel. So, happy hump day. It is Wednesday. I have watched the Dirty John episode season finale. And woo, it was good. It was good. The ending was good. And I actually watched the Oxygen right after the season finale on Bo on Bravo, they said catch more if you want to know about the real Dirty John. And Oxygen had, I think, a two-part expo expose on John Meehan and the women who he did dirty to. Uh, I will say that I didn't get a chance to watch the whole thing. I watched the second half of it. And I will say that it was based on what I saw from the the real people and their uh, their recounting of Dirty John and the production of the Bravo uh, eight part series of Dirty John was done very very well. It was very accurate. Uh, there there was a there was not too much deviation on what everyone was saying. I will say this uh, on the show on the Oxygen show. Uh, one of her daughters, her name is Jacqueline, she was in black screen. She was completely blacked out. You couldn't see anything, that there wasn't anything that you was identifiable about her. She was in black screen. I'm not quite sure why. I would have to watch the whole thing to know if it was explained why she was in black screen. But uh, the other daughter that was portrayed in the show, oh, so the daughter that is black screen, her name is Jacqueline. And I am assuming, based on what I saw, that Jacqueline is actually Ronnie or Veronica that was on the Broad Bravo show uh, of Dirty John. And Tara, she was shown, so we got to see who Tara was. And Tara being the dog lover, the dog mom. And I, I'm not going to give away what about Tara, but Tara was, was there uh, recounting her interactions with Dirty John. So um, it was very good. And, you know, a lot of people say, you know, how could she be so stupid? I even said that. Um, but, you know, you, you fall in love with someone and, and, and they meet your emotional needs. They're, you know, it's just like watching the, the uh, show Evil Lives Here. And it's, it's the same thing. You're, you emotionally... Uh, you have emotional attachments. Um, you emotionally invested in someone. And so it's very difficult to step and walk away from someone who is emotionally invested. Some people had some insecurity problems, but, you know, Deborah was right for the picking. And, and I, I will say this on Deborah's behalf, because there were a lot of women that he duped. And all I can say is when you are a con artist, it's just like when you are a con artist, part of your your toolkit is being charismatic and also part of your toolkit is reading people. You read what they need. You read what they need and you meet their needs. So someone who's a con artist, you see it on, on American Greed, they, they, they are confident man they are confidence artists they are confident in knowing what that person meet, needs and they tailor themselves to meet them so Deborah by all accounts was this beautiful uh, very innocent naive soul who just wanted to find love and really never had this this she never had a cynical ideal about people so she was right for the picking and it's just like anyone it's just like anything else I always say you know you see people who are who are career criminals and they do all this maniacal stuff and you're like if only they use those powers for good you know they could cure cancer or you know they could they could do some really amazing things but they use their talents for evil so yeah so that, that was good. But I will have that review up. I plan on doing it today. I already have my notes and everything. I just have, have not had time. So I'm in the car. So I figured, you know, jumpstart January. I need to get a video out. So I'm so sad.
because you know again it's part of my childhood I grew up Carol Channing passed away it was reported yesterday Carol Channing passed away at the age of 97 actually 16 days before her 98th birthday she was gonna be 98 on uh, January 31st and me growing up in New York growing up in the era of the 70s and 80s um, in public school we used to go to Manhattan and go to Broadway shows all the time you know I grew up listening watching uh, musicals Broadway stuff and Carol Channing is a Broadway icon but what a lot of people did not know is that Carol Channing is biracial so I took some quick notes and it made me kind of because I didn't know that for a long time because we look at Carol Channing she looks like a white woman so uh, Carol Channing is an only child to uh, a mother who was white and a father who was biracial, um, African-American and German. When she left for college at 16, her mother decided to tell her for the first time that her father's uh, mother was African-American and his father was German-American. So way back then, because Carol Channing was born in 1921, so, you know, we're talking about a, a really uh, tumultuous times when it comes to race relationships and definitely how uh, black Americans were treated in that, time, in that era. Um, but she felt that she needed to know this um, because just in case she winds up, you know, meeting a man and she ends up having this black baby, she wanted her to know that she has, you know, African roots. Now, I would have to read the book to, uh, to know, but Carol Channing is not noted as being an African-American entertainer, artist, you know, award-winning Broadway theater icon. She's known as Carol Channing. Now, the old people probably knew that she was black or had some black in her, but the world did not know that she was black. Evidently, she did a memoir in 96, and she mentioned it, which is where an excerpt. Um, it has been reported that she later in life went on and said that, you know, she knew that her, her father was uh, biracial. But it's very clear by her to me, I could be wrong. It's very clear that she lived her life as a white woman. Um, and she was white enough that she could pass. I'm wondering if she passed. I don't think she passed for the sake of passing. Because for 16 years of her life, she didn't know that she was black. So she obviously has had lived her life and her parents lived a life. I'm sure the father, her father, passed and lived the life as a white man. So for all intents and purposes, she I probably identifies as a white woman with African roots. And I know a lot of that went on because let's face it, if you had the opportunity, I, I could not pass. I am who I am. You can tell from my hair, you can tell from my skin tone uh, that I'm a, I'm a black woman. So uh, obviously I could not pass, but obviously passing was a, a, a big thing and it was for many people survival, uh, for a quality way of life. Um, but they, they passed in shadows, especially if you were going to have children, because you didn't know, I mean, you didn't know how those kids were going to turn out, but it's very clear from what I've seen and they've, you know, done clips that, you know, she lived her life as a white woman and she did not endure the things that her, her, you know, black counterparts had to endure. I would love to read the uh, memoir to see how she felt about that because she knew at 16, but do you embrace that knowing the climate? 
or do you just continue to live your life as you've always known? Like, does that information change for you the day before you knew it at 16 and the day after you find out after 16 and knowing that the life that that was going to be like for you? But truth be told, I don't think she had a choice because she looks like a white woman. You know, for, for all intents and purposes, she's a white woman. So for someone to tell, for her to tell someone she's black, I don't even think they would have believed her. I think she just went with the status quo. I think that's what, that's what happened. You know, I, I look at, um, here's case in point. So, uh, you know, Robin Thicke is a white man and he was, oh, I can't think of her name. He, he was married um, to a woman, an actress who was accomplished in her own right. She's biracial. You look at that baby. Uh, what is his name? I can't think of Julian. I think his, his name, the baby's name is Julian. That baby is light and bright, blonde hair, and I think he has blue eyes. No one is going to tell him that he's not, that he's black. And if you look aesthetically Caucasian, how is anyone else going to treat you anything but on face value? You know what I mean? So I think that's kind of like what happened to Carol Channing. I'm fascinated by you know, people who were able to pass in that era and what, what, what their price was, what did it cost them, you know, to do that. I don't think it cost her in the same way because she didn't know she had black roots until she was much older. So I, I would be interesting to read the book, see what she has to say about it. All right. So that's all I have. Happy hump day. I'm feeling a lot better. Um, it's now been what I had surgery last Monday so I'm a little bit over a week post-op um, I'll be honest <laughs> um, I have not been on social media I've scrolled a little bit I, I I think the last thing I remember doing was jumping on James's live and I think the meds kicked in I think I was on it for all but 10 minutes and so with the exception of doing my videos I really have been off the grid so uh, I don't know if anything's been going on while it's going you know on YouTube you miss a day you miss a lot you miss a, uh, a, a week you might as well be a generation <laughs> behind that. so uh, but all is well I'm feeling really good I needed the time off to rest um, I went back to the gym taking it easy I'm on you know limited uh, duty for two weeks and I'm not taking the medication anymore so that is very helpful I'm not taking the pain medication anymore because that was that was a lot um, yeah so I'm feeling good for hump day uh, take care of yourself and each other and I will talk to you soon bye